Hiya. So we're going to continue our kind our conversation about the the cumulative normal distribution function. Uh, sorry, the normal cumulative distribution function. Um, and so let me do a quick recap. Remember that we had this normal curve. We kind of said that our phi of z is going to be everything to the right to the left of um, this curve, um, the area under the curve, and that'll give us phi of z. Uh, and this curve we said is can be determined by like it looks like this, right? We get this nice little curve, um, and since the area under the curve is equal to one, we have that phi of zero is going to give us one half. Uh, and so th these are basically some of the big things we're going to be looking at. Uh, so one of the big things we kind of talked about already is that 5, 0 is equal to 1 half. Um, so some other things we know is if you look at the, 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 this graph here, you'll notice how if I start off with some minus z, then again, my defini by definition, everything to the left of the minus z is included under the curve. Uh, so what this means is this area here, oops, uh, this area here, if I look, is going to be equal to this area here. So if I want to know what the chance of something above z happened, then I can look at this area. So this area here is 1 minus, so 1 being the area under the curve, minus everything to the left of z. So in reality, we know 5 minus z is equal to 1 minus 5z. So if we ever see a minus sign in our uh, equations, well, we can just easily replace it with 1 minus 5z. So really, we only need to look at positive numbers when we're putting things into z. Um, OK, so let's set that. So remember 5ab, we're going to let this be the probability um, on the interval ab. So in other words, uh, when we're looking at our little thing, we're asking the probability of landing in this region here. What's the probability that we end up here? So that is what phi of um, AB is. Um, so this we already kind of saw, right? So the difference rule basically says is here we have phi of AB is equal to phi of B minus phi of A. Right, so we saw this. This is what we're kind of de uh, deriving this as. So if I were to plug in z and minus z, so I want to look at what's in the region here in green in between the two. Well, this is, so minus z and z. This is phi of z minus phi of minus z. Right, phi of uh, minus z, right? But from before, we know what 5z is and what 5 minus z is, right? So 5 minus z is 1 minus 5 of z. So here, we actually have 2 of 5 of z minus 1. So this 2 is coming from this minus and minus, minus, minus equals plus. So 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So we have 2 5 z minus 1. Um, and the, the thing to note is like, I'm doing all these formulas and you might be like, oh, I got to memorize these. Don't memorize them. Notice how I'm just using the graph, like use this graph to help you can, and if it's ever confusing, you can look them up in the book, in your notes. Like, don't worry. Like these are just kind of little tricks and trades that like kind of help see how things are working. I don't expect you to memorize any of these formulas. Um, so if we go to the back of the book and we actually try to plug in some of these values, what we'll see is the probability of being between minus 1 and 1 is actually roughly 68%. Between minus 2 and 2 gives us 95%, and minus 3 and 3 is 99.7%. So what this is basically saying is if I look at here, everything in this region is 68%. So this minus this, in essence, is 68%. This is 68%. Here, if I look at here, and I guess the two here is here, uh, this is going to be 
Uh, I should do this in green, I guess. This is 95%. If I look at the three, so the three is up close, really close. This is 99.7%. Um, at this point, you might be like, well, what are these minus ones, minus twos, one, two, etc." This is technically our standard deviations. So this is basically saying we're one standard deviation away. So this is our sigma. So remember, sigma we let equal to 1 for the normal the standard normal distribution. So you can think of this as sigma. This is our 2 sigma. This is our 3 sigma. So in other words, 99.7% of everything lives within three standard distributions, uh, standard derivation, uh, deviations, sorry, standard deviations away from our expected value. And this is why I'm saying like the standard deviation kind of shows how much things are pulled apart. So, okay, we've talked about this for a while. Um, in the next video, I'll actually go through some examples. I know this is confusing. So if you have questions, um, ask it in Piazza or put it in the Monday note updates. Um, and uh, I'll go over this in class a little more. Uh, this is definitely very confusing. So feel free to ask uh, all the questions you have. Um, I will do an example in the next video and hopefully that helps kind of figure things out. Um, a lot of this is just going through the background as to how things are formed. Um, it's really just the formulas that you kind of know ex exist and stuff like that. I really wanted to go through these things in more detail because I personally have trouble understanding how these work. Um, and so I wanted to go into much more detail um, to kind of help figure that out um, like for you all. Uh, but if it's still not making sense, either ask um, or just know that the formulas exist and use the formula. This is not the end of the world. Um, but yeah, uh, I will see you in the next video for some examples.